Okay, the backpack. One of the most confusing things in this game. And hopefully with this, it will help you out to understand how the backpack works and your inventory and all that crap. So you, you know, you're gonna press G to open your backpack. Some items will take up two slots, three slots, depending on what you pick up. Most of the things will just, you know, just take one slot, like this camping tent right here. No, I do not want to pitch it. Stop it. Like this camping tent will take up three slots. As you can see, it took three slots. So once I put it in, you can see it took the slot and then two more will just disappear, meaning it took three slots. One thing that's really confusing is how to open your backpack and put inventories in your backpack. So the only way that I know is to go up to you know some loot or a body, whatever, as long as you go into gear. Once you're in the gear, you're gonna click your backpack and you're gonna open your backpack. And this will show you how many slots and all the inventory that you have in your backpack. Now let's say you want to take some things from your backpack and there's no loot around you. Don't worry, you can still take things out of your backpack. You know, you're just gonna op go to G and you're gonna open your backpack, but those slots on the right side will not show up. Actually, they will show up on the left side, as you can see. The things on the left right here, those numbers over here, is how many you have and what's in your backpack. The things on your right is what you have in your inventory. Just in your regular inventory, not in your backpack. So let's say you want to take out something from your backpack, you could just, you know, double click it or you could press the arrow. And voila, you just took something out of your backpack. Let me just show you really quick. Open the backpack and see, it took the two clips that I had. So just remember if you want to put something in your backpack, go to gear, open your backpack. And right now this guy has some painkillers and some bandages on him. So you could just double click it. Or you could press the arrow and it'll automatically put the things in your backpack. Now you don't want them in your backpack. You can just close it or if you're already here you could do the same thing. Just double click it and it will automatically go into your inventory. Now let's say you're looting something or a body or some items on the ground. You're going to see some numbers. The ones on the left are going to be the ones that are in the body or on the ground or for some cases in your backpack. So right now this guy has a flashlight so it's on the left side and he has a backpack. The ones, the numbers on the right is what you have. Just remember that. So just remember, just you know, double click it arrow and you'll put stuff in your inventory or you could put them in your backpack it's up to you so before i go away from the controllers i did forgot to mention some things a lot of people don't usually do them but just or don't know how to do them so i just thought you know why not show you how guys how to do it um, one thing you could do, I know a lot of you know you could run, you know, whatever. Um, you could just, if you want, you could run, you could actually run a bit faster by double tapping forward. You could just tell by the animation, it's different, as you can see. And you actually do run a bit faster. I think if you have a pistol, you run a lot faster than you would if you had another, another gun. You can also do it from crouching. Let's say you're crouching and you just want to start running right away, you could do the same thing. 
just double tap forward and you'll be able to just start sprinting as you guys know q and e will lean left and right if you lay down and you press q and e it will roll left and it will roll to the right as you can see another little thing i forgot to mention on the mouse wheel is if you click things if you click it you'll be able to do the commands so let's say you find a ladder you click it you can start climbing ladders yeah. it will also work for the doors if you find some doors you're gonna see two little two arrows I don't know if this one's were closed I don't think they close yeah I don't think they close let me just find some doors really quick and I'll show you okay so here's some doors as you can see two arrows if you want to see the two arrows you can just click the mouse wheel and it will open or close them you can also do it by rolling the mouse and it will give you the option to open it and to close the door I think it's a lot easier if you just you know, click on it another thing you could do is you can walk by holding the shift this will let you walk a lot slower if you want to be a lot quieter and less visible to zombies you know, and maybe other people you can also do it by standing up if you double tap it it will just stay walking okay, now that you guys know what key does what you know the basic controllers and how to use your backpack um, it's good to know your HUD or HUD whatever you guys want to call it your display on your screen so first let's start with the debug monitor this is where it's going to show you how many zombies you have killed how many headshots you have done murders meaning every time you kill an actual player those will count as murders even if it's by self-defense it will still count as a murder how many bandits you have killed kill lots of those just kill them all <laughs> blood as you can see right now I have 10,000 blood which is an, it's an okay amount of blood you usually just start out with 12k how many zombies are alive and total zombies your temperature at 42 right now it minus at 42 celsius which is a good temperature to have and your name pretty obvious <laughs> okay so now you have the ear this is how much noise you're making as you can see if i walk nothing happens but once i start moving you can see a little tiny marker and the less noise you make like the less chance you have of attracting a zombie so obviously if you run you can see the markers show up a lot so it's a good idea to you know keep them as low as you can the eye is how visible you are to zombies if you're just standing there uh, you'll be a lot visible you could make it go down by crouching you could crouch and make it go down you could also just lay down which is the best thing you could do and it will be the less visible thing to zombies it will be really hard for zombies to detect you same thing with the, with the noise you will do very little noise when you're laying down I'm sorry about the rain I wasn't expecting it to rain inside a building Okay, and now we go to the most important things in the HUD 
the first thing you're gonna see is the little temperature thing. I forgot what it's called, thermometer. There you go. That's gonna determine how much your temperature is. Which I think is kind of useless because on the debug monitor it already shows you the temperature. So correct me if I'm wrong, if they're both the same or if they're different. I still not really sure. Never had to deal with it. The second thing you're gonna see is your thirst. This is a little gallon, it looks like it. Right now mine is red, meaning my character is really thirsty. So you, all you have to do is just drink some water. You could drink Pepsi, Coke, and this will bring up your, your thirst to normal, as you can see. The third icon is the blood. Right now, as you can see, mine is green, so I, you know, good blood. If it's red, you obviously you're about to die. As you as you lose blood, your screen will start turning black and white. And once you get blood over again, you you know re your color will return. And the last thing is the, your food or hunger meter which is a little a fork and a knife all you gotta do with that is eat something like a can of beans a can of sardines pretty much anything that's food will make you go up again my guy is really hungry right now so let me feed him really quick one thing before I I'm done with the HUD, almost forgot with the blood, it's um, I guess three things, three ways you could get blood, one thing you could do is eat canned food, which will give you a little bit of blood, the second thing you could do, you could kill an animal and cook it in a fireplace, and third thing you could do is blood transfusion, and for that you're going to need a friend the blood transfusion will heal you all the way so let's say you're at 5000 blood your friend will do a transfusion for you and you will automatically go up to 12k which is the maximum blood you could have 